I'm Jessica Raven, and your Skyline Scoop starts right now. Today is Have you ever been a witness to bullying? When you see bullying, there are safe things you can do to make it stop. Talk to a parent, teacher, or another adult you trust. Adults need to know when bad things happen so they can help. Not saying anything can make it worse for everyone. The kid who is bullying will think it is okay to keep treating others that way. To continue our anti-bullying week, today is Pledge Day. Turn in your hug certificate and pledge to not bully in order to wear your yellow t-shirt on Thursday and get candy. This week, Skyline's Theater Department presents The Highest Heaven, written by Jose Cruz Gonzalez and directed by Daniel Taylor. The performances will be tonight and Thursday in the Skyline Auditorium at 7 p.m. Student tickets are $3 and adult tickets are $5. Some of the cast are by the studio this week. Let's take a look. I'm Katie J, and I'm here with the cast and director of the school play, The Highest Heaven. Can everyone please introduce themselves and their characters? My name is Diabian Dodson. Um, my character in the play is Betsy Price, but the other characters refer to her as La Negra. And um, my character is an old black lady who helps a young boy who's named Hurricane. My name is Daniel Taylor. I'm the director of the production. My name is Daniel, and I am five different characters on this play, which are Moises, the police official, the addict, the undertaker barber, and and the husband. But my favorite character in all of them will be the addict because we're both smart and sneaky, and we are both broke, and we both need money. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jindea Christian. I'll be playing Kika in The Wife. Kika w is Orkin's mother. She's an important part of the introduction of the play. Okay, being the director, where does this play, this play take place and in what time period? This play takes place in the 1930s during the Great Depression. Uh, it was a time when the uh, Mexicans and Mexicans, uh, Mexican Americans were repatriated back to uh, Mexico. They were put on trains and sent back to Mexico. Um, it takes place in three different locations. We have a uh, graveyard, it takes place in a forest, and it takes place in a valley. Okay, can you give us some background about the play and why you chose to produce it? The play is uh, basically, well, First of all, the reason I chose to do it is because it has a lot to do with uh, something that is going on in society today, which is the big topic of immigration. And uh, this play touches on how a young boy uh, by the name of Urkin, he's uh, separated at a train station from his mother. And throughout his trial and error or whatever, he's trying to find his way back from Mexico, back to the States to find his mom and dad. Okay, thank you. Being one of the main characters, can you give us a little bit about your um, character and their background? Um, my character, she um, she starts off alone, but uh, she finds this boy, she finds this boy, and like he follows her throughout the play, and then so they become closer through the play, and uh, throughout the play, I'm sick. I have uh, tuberculosis, so um, I'm trying to work through that so I can help him through um, finding his mother while trying to help myself. Okay, that's good. Can everyone give their own opinion on how y'all get through the um, play and it, your experience on set? Um, my experience has been good because... Um, uh, I opened up more, and the cast members, they became my friends during the play. 
and in some parts it it is in Spanish there, so I had to like work on the Spanish parts. Mm -hmm. You being the director. Um, this play was sort of a uh, hard. Uh, I chose it because. Uh, I felt like it would be something the uh, children could work with. Uh, something I didn't mention about the play is the main character in the play, the young boy named Urican, he's sort of compared to a monarch butterfly. He starts off as a young caterpillar and as he works his way through his trials and tribulations trying to find his ma and uh, pa or whatever, he is, uh, he grows like the uh, monarch butterfly does. They go into their cocoon, they come out of the cocoon, uh, their wings get stronger. So by the end of the play, we see a drastic change in him. So that's the reason if you've seen the flyers around campus and you probably asked why the butterfly is on there, it's because the butterfly symbolizes the uh, growth, the growth of Oregon. Okay. Now for you, being five characters, how hard is it to juggle each character? Well, it was kind of hard at the beginning because I had all my roles mixed up. Mm -hmm. But I figured out that my first four characters that were all related to the antagonist. Mm -hmm. So I figured out that they were stepbrothers. Okay. So I kind of like got in each of their minds and they all work for the same person. So I related everything to make it a little bit simpler. Okay. And, it, and I liked it because, you know, I made friends and I related to everyone. That's good. Um, so yeah. Okay, and you? Mm, I would say my the most difficult part was for me was, you know, building the bond with my son, getting closer, not treating him like a foster child. So, and also working with the Spanish words along with the play. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That was a good interview. Then. Go take a look at the talented Photography Collective students work on display in the G building downstairs hall near the exit doors. The show figures topography, commercial ads, motion photography, and Hispanic heritage photography. Blood Cup will be meet today after school from 4.30 to 5.00. They will be starting their new book, Moxie, by Jennifer Matthew, in which an unlikely teenager starts a feminist revolution at a small town, Texan High School. Don't forget to stop by the library during your lunch on Thursday and Friday for Miss Horner's hashtag make and take. Come to the center section of the library and make your own slime. Now it's time for your fact of the day. Congratulations to the swim team who had a successful time trial event on Friday. Special congratulations go out to Captain Regina Cabrera, who set a new Skyline School record in 200 individual medley, and to the senior captain, Tony Ovalli, who set a new Skyline High School record in the 200 freestyle. There will be a team meeting in room 304 today, and their first official meet of the season will be Thursday night at Luce Notorium versus Woodrow and W.T. White. Now for your ACE segment. Shortly after this photo was taken, April Starr was diagnosed with vitiligo a disorder that causes a loss of pigmentation in her skin. And as the condition progressed, so did the bullying. But today, April Starr has a message for everyone who wants to stare at someone who looks different. Take a look. Take a look at this picture. Take a look at this picture. At five years old, I was diagnosed with vitiligo, which causes me to lose color in my skin. I've been bullied and teased most of my life and that breaks me down. I can't walk the streets without kids pointing and staring. I have been called names like a cow and a dog just for the way I look. I found out that people who were supposed to be my friends were laughing and talking about me behind my back and that made me feel alone. Being bullied is so awful and I can't believe people can be so mean. I used to cry myself to sleep because I felt like nobody knew what it was like to be different. One day I decided to turn things around. I refuse to let kids call me names anymore because I'm better than that. If you're out there and have been teased or bullied, I want you to use my life as an inspiration. When I look in the mirror, I see a strong, 
independent young lady. I'm coming on The Maury Show because I'm a survivor of bullying. I'm April Scar, and I'm stronger than the people who bullied me. And I hope others can draw from my strength. Everybody welcome April Star. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Look at you, all grown up. Have a seat right here. Look at you. You had to make a decision. I'm going to stand up for those kids who are bullied. And you said no more, right? Exactly. And you picked out something that gave you the confidence, that gave you the self-respect, that you could overcome everything. And that was modeling. Exactly. You're a model. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've appeared. I mean, you've already arrived. You've appeared <laughs> in that Essence magazine. Yes, I did. Oh. <laughs> now think about think about your self-esteem when you see your picture in a magazine like that. It was an amazing opportunity for me because I love like. I love that picture. <laughs> That's your fave, huh? Yeah, I love that picture. When did you think you began to notice that you were different? I have to say third grade because people would look at me differently and I was, had just been diagnosed with vitiligo, so it was just like the stares and you know, just the different, like the name calling. What name calling? I'd been called like a cow. They would say that I was a Dalmatian dog. A Dalmatian dog? Yeah. By the way, uh, April's mother, Yindra, and her father, David, are in the audience, and they've been by their daughter's side for all this time. So all this happened, I, I think, when it started when she was like five or six years old in terms of the vitiligo. What's it like for a father to know that their daughter is being bullied? It's unbelievable what she would come tell me. I wouldn't want any one child to go through what my daughter has gone through, but what I've done was I inspire her as much as she's inspired me. I, I motivate her. I tell her she's gorgeous every moment I can. She's a beautiful child. Don't worry about what I'm saying. So, so you recommend to parents that's the way to handle it with your kids? I mean, bullying is, is minor if you teach your children that it's just words. It's just air. You come home, you know, your father says you're the most gorgeous little princess, you know, and things like that. But don't let the bully until... Also, to anyone that is a bully, right. that's, a, that's an issue with yourself. You have a self-esteem issue. Right. You have something that you're trying to find wrong with yourself, but you can't, so you point at someone else. Flaws. That's all we have for today, Raiders. Be sure to catch up on all things Skyline by following us at Skyline Broadcasting. And to make sure you never miss an episode of your Skyline Scoop, sign up to receive more broadcasts by texting at SKYN to 81010. Catch us every day at Skyline Broadcasting.org and make sure to listen to tomorrow since today and every day in the cafeteria and anywhere in the world with Skyline Radio. I'm Jessica Raven, and from everybody here at Skynet Broadcasting, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.